Thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for having me. Uh, can I can I ask everyone uh, for, to, to uh, join me in once again thanking Cuba for uh, that amazing um, uh, set that was uh, terrific and an incredible way to uh, start the day and, su and such an inspiring uh, for me as somebody who definitely has a difficult time uh, getting started uh, in in the morning and and who uh, resisted many invitations from uh, Mark to uh, address uh, a creative morning session. It's finally, finally accepted uh, and got over my fears of, of, of doing a morning presentation. Uh, so uh, Kuba was, uh, that was very inspiring. And I will try to, uh, I will try to match the, I, well, I won't try to match the energy, but I will, I will just let the inspiration uh, wash, wash over me. Um, I, I am uh, also uh, joining you all uh, here today from uh, uh, unceded Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh uh, territories, and um, it's um, it's a it's a pleasure to be here. And um, thank you so much as well to uh, uh, Richard and, and Hemlock. Um, and also, I, I have I, I just out, slightly outside of frame. Um, my uh, what I can I show you? Okay, so I'm just going to quickly, very quickly introduce uh, uh, my daughter. Josephine is uh, just doing uh, a, a little bit of, of a sort of bead work um, uh, next to me. So we are we're sharing a, a creative uh, morning uh, at the moment. So if you hear any heckling, uh, that's uh, that's that's who it's it's coming from. Um, uh, so see, uh, so um, uh, yes, I am a, a, a comedian um, uh, who was on uh, the debate team uh, in in high school. As I have explained uh, uh, to many people before, I was on the debate team because as as uh, as a uh, endomorphic uh, adolescent, the debate team was the only team I could be on in high school where they didn't make me uh, be goalie. Uh, so it is, um, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, be joining you. I'm gonna talk a bit about uh, comedy today, um, uh, and with, to the theme of, of release. Uh, uh, the philosopher uh, Immanuel Kant uh, described laughter as a tense, a, a tense expectation released into nothing. Um, uh, which is also uh, um, a useful uh, description uh, of an arts degree. Uh, but uh, we will uh, be talking about uh, we'll be talking about comedy this morning. And uh, so, to in order to get us started, I thought I would uh, do um, because we're uh, doing this via Zoom. I'm going to do uh, I'm going to start things off with an impression uh, today, which is uh, an impression I can only do. Uh, on Zoom, so this is a this is an impression uh, that I can only do uh, in an electronic um, format. Uh, this is uh, this is an impression of uh, your uh, your parents and or grandparents. Okay, so uh, this is uh, your your parents and or grandparents. Hello, I love you. Uh, how's everything going where you are? Okay, here we are. Um, there you go. The, uh, the Zoom, uh, there, thank you, Manuel. Um, this is, uh, the, we, we, of course, in the comedy industry have been uh, getting used to the, the Zoom uh, world. This is where we've been plying our trade for the, <laughs> oh, Mark, I'm so sorry that that is your life. Uh, this, this is, uh, <laughs> oh, wow. uh, thank you. Um, I, 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 is that the first Creative Morning rim shot, or is that an ongoing? Um, That'll I, be the only one, Charlie. <laughs> uh, we we've been uh, doing uh, the Zoom shows now for uh, uh, going on uh, 18, 18 months. Um, my very first show of of the year was a uh, was a show uh, on Zoom in Winnipeg uh, in January. Um, and uh, I would have to say, if you find yourself with any um, uh, social uh, or commercial obligations uh, in Winnipeg in January, uh, do them on Zoom. It's a great way to see Winnipeg in January. Uh, is I, I do feel that uh, now having come through uh, the pandemic, there are some cities in Canada which will be online only. Uh, and and w uh, Winnipeg, I, I feel uh, from from uh, Halloween to Easter, 
will now is essentially be. Uh, I, I actually was in uh, Winnipeg for a week uh, in December 2019. Uh, and I feel like I may be the final British Columbian to experience uh, Manitoba winter, uh, which is also um, an honor. Uh, <laughs> uh, so um, this is uh, this has been um, uh, uh, you know an interesting uh, time to 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 say the least, uh, and many people have um, huddled in for a lot of pandemic uh, reading. Uh, a lot of people have been uh, settled in for pandemic viewing. Um, one of the series that my uh, partner uh, Kara and I have been uh, got through um, in, in sort of record time um, was a uh, series um, Hacks with uh, Gene Smart, um, uh, which if you have not seen uh, Hacks uh, is, a, is a series about um, an, an older um, an older comedian uh, uh, sort of uh, based on kind of a Joan Rivers uh, archetype working in, in in Las Vegas and she's she's working with a, a young comedian um, uh, a sort of um, a TV writer um, uh, who's uh, has a sort of social media um, blow up in her face and and uh, finds herself on the uh, uh, on the on the wrong side of of of, of the business, and uh, and and it's 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 brilliantly acted. It's 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 wonderfully written, and it was brought to my attention by my aunt, who who uh, says to um, me when she she's telling me about the show, she says Gene Smart's great in it. It's it's a it's a it's a well done show, and but in in complaining about hacks, uh, my aunt says nothing's funny anymore. And uh, what she's referring to is the fact that Hacks has this, this, this underside energy to it, which is that it's, it's not just a funny show. It's not just a comedy. And what she's referring to is this broader cultural trend known as the sad com, um, uh, of which the epitome is probably um, Bojack Horseman, if anyone has, has seen that um, uh, 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 Netflix uh, cartoon, uh, which was uh, satirized in uh, the Onion headline, um, uh, uh, animated comedy series, uh, new animated comedy series gives viewers clinical depression. Um, so this is, this is, this is a, a, a new uh, cultural moment. We, we, we're in this, uh, yes, so uh, yeah, SADCOM. Um, uh, is, this is, this is, a, this is a, a new cultural moment where, where comedy is, is, is not really um, trusted on its own in, in, the way, in the way it once was. Uh, a few years ago, uh, I was in Los Angeles and speaking to a film producer who said to me, um, words that um, at the time were, were fairly kind of novel, um, but, but were quickly gaining cultural steam, um, which was, uh, he said, um, comedy these days is not so much about the laughs, uh, which it's a weird thing to say if you sit down and, and actually sort of unpack the sentence, right? Um, uh, you know, hockey these days is, is really not so much about the goals or, or uh, you know, chocolate these days is, is, is really not so much about the deliciousness. Like it's, it's, a, it's a strange thing to, uh, it's, it's a strange way to, to talk about comedy, but it had become a sort of um, accepted way to, to think about humor, to think about the form, um, especially uh, in those uh, days, two or three years ago, in, 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 in light of um, uh, the Netflix special uh, Nanette, uh, um, featuring the Australian comedian Hannah Gatsby, uh, in which um, Gatsby described um, very sort of harrowing experiences from her own uh, life and, and basically sort of addressed them to the idea of comedy itself as being lacking in, in the proper sort of dimension and power to, um, to, to, to fully sort of capture the, the, the range of 
human uh, experience and, 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 to, and to, to pay full tribute to it in, in, a, in a kind of meaningful and, and multi-dimensional way without cheapening it. Um, do we trust comedy on its own? It's actually not a new question. Uh, this year is the centenary of Charlie Chaplin's feature film debut, uh, The Kid. Uh, if you haven't seen The Kid, um, it's, it's, it's an amazing movie. It's, it's, it's about an hour. Jo Josephine is a big fan. You, you love The Kid, right? We've watched it a million times. I've never seen it without crying. Uh, it's, it's an, it's an hour long. Um, you can, uh, I think you can probably watch it on, on, on YouTube. Um, there are, there's a beautiful edition of it uh, out from Criterion. Uh, it's, it's an hour long film, uh, that basically taps into, uh, some of the biggest traumas of Chaplin's own life as, a, as someone who spent time in, in sort of late Victorian, early Edwardian, um, workhouses and orphanages. Um, uh, but uh, it's, it basically centers around um, the uh, chaplain's uh, relationship in, in the film with a foundling, a, 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 an infant who he finds abandoned and uh, who we then pick up the story five years later where he's, he's, he's sort of living on the street basically with, with this little five-year-old um, child. Um, the, the film was advertised as Six Reels of Joy, um, a film with laughter and perhaps even a tear. That's the uh, initial intertitle card that introduces the film. Uh, to go back and, and think a little bit about this, the context in which this emerged. When he made this film, I said it was his first feature film, but Chaplin was already the, the perhaps the most famous person in the world when this movie came out. Uh, he was the world's uh, biggest movie star by far, um, but movies were, were a completely different thing at the time. Uh, so when he began making movies in the, in the years before, just before World War I, uh, Charlie Chaplin was making movies for companies like Keystone. Uh, he was making movies for people like uh, Mutual and SNA. And movies at the time were essentially these six, seven minute uh, slapstick, uh, basically, these these they didn't have stories they didn't have characters they were they were they were essentially cartoons that involved human beings they were driven almost entirely by violence they were driven entirely by basically dynamic eclectic big things happening on on screen and as chaplin was making these shorts over the years that led up to the kid the shorts got longer they got more involved and they brought in more elements of, of character, more elements of, of story. So that by the time he got to the kid, which was an hour long, he had essentially made something that was 10 times longer than what, uh, what he had started with in, in terms of a form. Like when, when, when we think about it, uh, you know, it, it, would, it would be like, you know, movies today are, are, are you know, two hours long. If, 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 if he were now making something that was, that was 20 hours long, right? Like uh, something, something uh, like on the order of, of two seasons of an HBO show, like, like that sort of expansion. Um, uh, it, it, he was, he was explicitly trying to make people uh, cry uh, with 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 the movie, not just laugh. He was he was explicitly trying to make them think about poverty. He was he was trying to make them think ab about about the lives of oppressed and marginalized people. This was something completely uh, out of the realm of of what people were thinking about in terms not only of of of, of comedy but but of film when Chaplin uh, started making these pictures. That's a, that's a hundred years ago. Um, this year. Um, 80 years ago this year, uh, Sullivan's Travels was made by Preston Sturges. If you've not seen um, uh, Sullivan's Travels, it's not as famous as The Kid, uh, but just an absolutely hilarious movie and a, and a favorite movie among comedians. 
partly because it's this movie about comedy. It's this love letter to comedy. It's a, it's a film uh, about a, uh, an, an extraordinarily successful, rich Hollywood comedy writer who doesn't want to make comedies anymore. Just feels like he needs to make something more substantial, something more real, and, and sets out to uh, learn the, the real side of, of, of the United States of America, particularly in the Depression, and, and, and sets out to live the, the hobo experience and is riding the rails. And, and uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's this very broad, funny film, uh, which by its third act involves its, its, its main character actually getting uh, uh, caught up in, in, in the life of, of, of the oppressed and, and, and uh, persecuted American. And it, it eventually it ends up on a chain gang um, in this sort of series of, of crazy um, uh, exploits and uh, finds himself uh, in this prison uh, chain gang that is invited uh, into this uh, black church uh, where they are um, shown a film as a kindness, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, uh, as a kindness to the prisoners. Um, and uh, as, as he watches a comedy uh, in this church and watches the parishioners of the church, watches the prisoners who are on this chain gang lose themselves in the comedy uh, the main character finally realizes uh, the value of what he was doing um, all those years. Um, so, so there is this hundred year long, at least, uh, conversation in, in um, North American popular culture. The second film was called uh, Sullivan's Travels. So there's this, there's this, there's this conversation in North American uh, popular culture that, that goes back at, at least a century of, of is comedy, basically is comedy like cake frosting? Is it something that we can have? Yeah, it is yummy. Uh, is it something that we can have on its, uh, is it something that, that we can have on its own? Or is it something kind of sinful and guilty that, that really you, you have to have on something else? Maybe you can kind of you know, lick it off the beaters, uh, 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 you know, uh, in, a, in a shameful kind of moment of indulgence. But really, if, if you're gonna have it, it it's, it's gotta be with something like more substantial. Like what? Like yeah, like marshmallows. <laughs> so you gotta have it with something more substantial, like marshmallows. No, um, no, yeah, like on a stick, exactly. Um, and I wanna make the, the other side of the argument. Um, I want to argue that comedy, laughter, and humor are something elemental about uh, what it means to be human and are goods in and of themselves. Um, uh, that they are absolute goods in their own right, but also that they obliquely and indirectly make us better as individuals um, and as societies. So to address this, I want to talk about what the, what the elements of a joke are. Um, and so I'm going, to, I'm going to tell one of my favorite uh, street jokes. This is a, when a comedian talks about a street joke, a street joke is a joke that doesn't belong to any one comedian. Uh, a, 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 a street joke is a joke that's kind of it belongs to everybody. It's 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 um, uh, what's the what's the folklore? Um, it, it's it's just part of the part of the popular culture. It has no it has no author. This is this is my favorite um, street joke, and I, I find it's a, it's a good teaching tool because it contains everything that a good joke is supposed to contain. So, two old men are 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 speaking. Two old two old friends and. One of them says, uh, oh, um, you, you, you got to try this memory pill I've been taking. Yeah, it's the greatest pill. It's been helping me remember. You've got to take it. He says, oh, OK, well, well, what's the name of the pill? And he says, oh, the name of the pill, the name of the pill. The what's the name of that flower? And the guy says, yeah. He says, uh, the, the flower, it's red. He says, oh, red flower. Uh, and uh, the flower's got thorns. Uh, it's a red flower with thorns. Uh, and it's a flower you give it on Valentine's Day. 
it's a red flower. It's got thorns. You give it on Valentine's Day. Uh, it's, it smells nice, the flower. Uh, it's a red flower. It's got thorns. You give it on Valentine's Day. It smells nice. A rose? The guy says, that's it. And he turns to his wife and he says, Rose, what's the name of the memory pill I've been taking? Um, so every, <laughs> thank you, Justin. I do appreciate the uh, laughs in the, um, in the chat box. Um, <laughs> this is, um, this is, this is uh, one of my favorite jokes in the world. And it, 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 it contains everything that makes a joke a joke. So um, the, the two components, uh, the two literary components of a joke are the, the, the premise and the punchline um, or, or the, the, the setup and the payoff. Um, that's basically the, the beginning and the end, the, the, the thing that sets the pattern um, uh, and, or the disruption and the thing that recalibrates us or, 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 or puts things back into, um, into the, new, uh, the new funny order. Um, and, uh, or, or in Kant's uh, sort of uh, formula of, of tense expectation released into nothing, the premise is what builds the tension and the punchline is, is what releases us. Um, uh, but, but within the premise and, and, and across the premise and punchline are usually um, five uh, interrelated um, uh, elements that, 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 um, that are usually at work uh, in various proportions in, in any good joke. Um, and like I said, these are, these are interrelated, but um, the, the big ones are uh, uh, irony, reversal, uh, tension, surprise and incongruity. Um, and uh, so, um, you know, you, th these are all, uh, these, th these, these are terms, terms that, that you know, but they're basically, th their incongruity um, is, you know, any two things beside each other that don't belong beside each other. Irony, reversal, uh, what we expect is not what we get. Tension and surprise which is also why a joke is not as funny to us when we hear it the second time. Um, there's, there's not that same building of tension. There's, there's not that same um, building uh, and release uh, of surprise. And so you, you, then you start to see what it is about that joke um, th that makes it work so much. Uh, th th there's, that, there's that excruciating building of, of, of tension. There's, there's the constant, um, uh, reversals. There's um, the the incongruity of the fact that this guy uh, is convinced that he's got this great memory pill, and the fact that um, uh, he can't remember uh, he can't remember his his own wife's name. The other great thing about that joke is that there's actually a joke within a joke. So he 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 says what's he says you got to try this memory pill I've been taking. His friend says, what's the name of the pill? And then he can't remember the name of the pill. So the first, the very first thing that happens is the joke is the guy can't remember the name of the memory pill he's been taking. That's kind of, you know, okay. It's, that's a sort of funny little joke within the joke itself. You then build and build the tension towards what's going to be the real punchline. And then the real punchline is essentially a version of that same punchline just writ large. You also see the, this uh, kind of antiseptic quality to like taking a joke apart in too great a detail. It, the pleasure is, is, which is, which is why I like to tell the joke first so that we can all just enjoy it as a piece of, of beautiful thing uh, and then um, dissect the frog on the table. Um, but you can also see from those elements, incongruity, um, irony, why it is that jokes are such useful tools for human beings to point out when things are wrong, when things are wrong in a society, when things are wrong in our lives, why things are, uh, why, why humans are, are hypocritical or, or when we're getting things, when we're getting things wrong. Incongruity is any two things that 
don't go together, but are together, which is why so many jokes about politicians or religious leaders are, 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 are staples, right? Uh, which is why the joke is always, um, you know, uh, a rabbi, a priest, and a minister. Um, uh, the, these, these, uh, uh, these, these sort of expectations or, or hypocrisies or whatever that we um, that we expect, or, or or the release from from the incongruities. Um, you know, there's there's uh, uh, you know another joke that that is is uh, a favorite of mine is uh, you know a a a, a rabbi, a priest, and a minister are, 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 are speaking together on, on, a, on a platform, and um, they're, they're speaking about death. And um, for the final question, the moderator says, uh, I want to thank you all um, for speaking today. Um, and, you know, as a final question, um, I'd like to ask, you know, what would you like for people to say about you at your funeral? And uh, the priest thinks, and he says, I guess I'd like to, for people to say he was a generous man. And the minister thinks and says, I'd like for people to say he was a kind man. And the rabbi says, I'd like for people to say, look, he's moving. Uh, that incongruity, the irony, uh, the, the expectation that we're going to hear something comforting we're going to hear some wisdom that that we don't possess ourselves and then instead we hear the same fear we hear the same uh, uh grounding uh, uh earthy uh terror in the face of death is is a release um and and so jokes uh are um uh, ha are and have been a part of 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 cosmological and moral systems um, from the very beginning. I mean, really going, reaching back into absolutely primordial um, um, uh, systems of, of, of meaning making. I mean, if you if you read the um, the Haida creation story of Raven and the First People, um, which is the the, the um, in, inspiration for the the famous Bill Reed um, uh, uh, carving, the the incredible uh, sculpture. Um, which is, is uh, now at the, the Museum of Anthropology. Um, uh, that story is hilarious. I mean, it, it's, it's an absolutely um, uh, filled with, you know, through the, the trickster um, character of the, of the raven, um, filled with, with body hilarious um, moments. Um, and uh, if, you, if you read the, the gospel according to Matthew, um, there's a whole section in which Jesus tells what can only be described as jokes. Um, so what's often described as the parable of the moat and the beam, um, in which um, uh, Jesus says, uh, why do you take, uh, why do you point out the, um, the moat or the speck in your neighbor's eye when there's a beam in your own eye? Um, you know, this is, this is often described as a parable, even though it, it bears none of the technical markings of, of, of what makes a parable a parable in the biblical scholarship. This is a joke. It's, a, it's, it's based on irony and it's based on incongruity. And it's is smack in the middle of a bunch of other ironies and incongruities um, in the Gospel uh, of Matthew, um, where where you know uh, Jesus says, you know, if your child asked you for bread, would you give him a rock? If your child asked for for, for a fish, would you give him a snake? All of these funny, weird, ironic moments that are all in this passage devoted to not being hypocritical and not uh, judging other people, uh, which is almost always at the, at the base of the, the comic as a sensibility. Uh, the, the, the understanding of, of, of hypocrisy. Um, the comedy as a story, um, you know, the, the, the ancient Greek idea is, you know, tragedies and badly and comedies and well. 
Um, and, and, and this idea is, is one that links comedy up with the sort of eschatological model of, the, of Abrahamic faiths like Islam, Judaism, Christianity, um, but also with enlightenment projects like liberalism, socialism, communism, the idea that history can be redeemed, that, that our situations can, can get better. Uh, the philosopher Simon Critchley says that comedy, like religion, shows us uh, a, a vision of a, of a better world, but unlike religion, tells us that only this world exists, and this is the one that, that we're stuck in. Um, so ultimately, I, the, the, the idea that I, I wanted to uh, end on is, is that as much as Zoom comedy is, is great, um, the reason uh, that it's not ideal is because uh, we ideally want the audience to be in darkness. We want for the audience to be able to share illicitly a collective laughter. Whether you're at a comedy movie or whether you're at a, at a stand-up show, uh, the ideal comedy setup is for the comic uh, to be up under the light, sharing the uncomfortable truth while the audience in the safety of the collective darkness uh, can laugh, can have that release. And so I look forward uh, to us being uh, able to do that again soon. Uh, we need to laugh and, uh, and we get to, and we shouldn't uh, feel bad for doing it. Uh, thanks. Yay. Thank you so much for sharing your time and your creativity with us uh, today, Charlie. And thanks, Josephine, for your comments. Uh, we love having you pop in there. Um, so we're going to have a little bit of time for some conversation and questions. And so um, you can pop your question in the chat or use the raise your hand function. And there's already a great question in the chat. So I'm going to start with that one. Um, so CB27 says, uh, I love how you've just deconstructed the social importance of jokes. So how do you go about jokes in the age of political correctness? Seems that now jokes are taken so seriously that it's hard to know what to do. By the way, I'm not a comedian, but I love jokes. So uh, I think that's a great question. So uh, take it away, Charlie. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's um, and this is, this is, this is one where um, I want to be careful to speak to, I guess, my kind of, um, my own sort of evolving thinking on this, and 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 my my uh, my my own feeling um, that that it, on, on 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 how important it is, and 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 how grateful I am that we are as a society moving towards uh, more inclusive, less generally less hateful, less um, less exclusive um, uh, language, and and. And, and, and attitudes. And so it's, it's um, but, but I also don't want to ignore what I think is in your question, a, a very real thing, which is, which is the, the, um, the, the, the creeping uptightness and unwillingness to, um, uh, to differentiate between comedy as a, as a space and and maybe other other spaces a, a, a good friend of mine um uh who um actually is is the uh, person who introduced me to uh to mark um sent me a, a study um uh that uh, uh it was a poll um that said that 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 showed that respondents wanted um I forget how it was framed, but basically, basic, the, the, the long and short of it was that it was for people who, for whom it was very important that their elected leaders and community leaders and, and stuff uh, use very, um, always use very kind of appropriate language, et cetera, um, didn't have those same expectations or even desires of their comedians. Um, that, 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 that the general public is also intelligent and uh, 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 you know discreet and analytical enough to to understand that there's a difference between um, you know what what a teacher says in a classroom or what a what a an elected 
official says versus what a, what a comedian says um, in, in the space of, of a comedy club. I also think that the general loss of context um, across our society is, is a huge problem, not, not only for comedians, um, but, but in, in general. Um, you know, my, my general feel is like, you know, if, if something is not coming from a place of, of hatefulness, uh, it, it, it usually will, will land um, uh, in, in the right way and people in, intuit that. Um, uh, you know, that's not a foolproof system. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I feel like I could address that question for, for a very long time. I, I want to I wanna leave room for it, uh, other ones, but it's a big one. Um, it's one that I think we have a lot of thinking to do uh, about um, and uh, uh, and, it, and it's one that I um, I feel like my own thinking on is, is is still in flux. Amazing. Um, that's yeah. I feel like that could be a subject of its, uh, its whole own like university lecture series. Um, <laughs> um, our next question is actually from Cuba. So uh, Cuba, if you want to uh, pop in there, we're gonna highlight you and. Uh, Hi, Charlie. Hi. Man, that was great. <clears throat> I love I, the, uh, and I look forward to it, but being in the darkness while uh, you're up there sharing the uncomfortable truth. <laughs> Thank that you. is to me what comedy is, you know? And I was thinking of what your aunt said about the sadness and stuff like, sad calm, is that what you called it? Right, yeah, yeah, not my term, but yeah. Uh, right, right. Um, so I have a question and it's something I've always wondered and just as a recording artist and for me it's easy because well even sometimes I forget my own words but I you know when you're doing a, a full headlining set um how do you remember everything like is it just through repetition or is there a system that you have or what yeah that's um that's one a great question and two such a like such a performer's question like that like it doesn't surprise me at all that that would be the the, the question that the musician would ask like because uh, also, like if you forgot one little segue you know it could have only been a 20 second moment and then you're part way through your set and you're like oh man i forgot that really great joke but it won't fit in now like does that happen oh so so here's my favorite story about that this is a um this is this is a Brent Butt story. So Brent Butt was doing a show in Singapore, and uh, he had gone through his set and had absolutely um, uh, taken every uh, Canadian reference out of the set. Like like had 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 just gone through with a, a fine tooth comb, but he was just killing. Like he's on stage and it's going so well. That he goes, oh, okay, you know, he's starting to feel loose and he's he's going into stuff that he hadn't planned. And then he starts this bit about winning the lottery or uh, like, have, and, and then he realizes that that punchline for this bit is for that money, I could buy red deer. <laughs> and so he realizes that Singaporeans have no clue what red deer is. Like, this is, it'll be, this will be like ending on, in the middle of a, so he's just, he's telling this joke and he feels the sweat creeping on his, on his head. He's just thinking, what's close to Singapore? What's close to Singapore? And he, so he's just like going, to, and so he goes, he, he gets to the punch and he goes, uh, you know, for that money, I could buy Malaysia. And he gets a big <laughs> laugh and then, and then he goes just, okay. And then he goes on with his, his set and blah, blah, blah. And then after the set, the organizers have talked to him. They went, man, that went great. And, then, and they said, the way you worked in the recent tension with Malaysia around the, uh, <laughs> uh, like it was like, and I, the, I, the, I love that story so much because it, it's, it's, that happens all the time. People will realize they forgot to set something up. They forgot to, so, so, so it's not a foolproof system whatsoever. Um, the, the people who blow my mind are the people who tell like, a million one-liners in, the, in yeah. their 45 minute set. I have no idea how those people um, memorize their sets. For me, it's usually you tell something on a theme and, and everything kind of hangs together, partly just through narrative and partly just through repetition. That makes sense. That makes sense if you have a theme. Well, thanks. That was yeah. great.
Thank you. Awesome, great question. Um, I just want to like call out Judy for her great callback about the memory pill. She's like on point. <laughs> <laughs> just need a memory pill to keep this thing going. Um, our next question is from Maryam Obini. Maryam, if you want to unmute yourself and you can ask uh, Charlie your question. Thank you. Hi, Charlie. That was lovely. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you often do comedy in French and if there are diffi any difficulties telling jokes in one language over another. That's an amazing question. I So the, the last show that I did before the pandemic began was a, a, um, was a show in French uh, here in Vancouver. You're welcome. Um, uh, and it was my second ever time doing stand-up in French. And I thought, well, this could, this could be good. Maybe I could start doing uh, uh, stand-up in French. As a, and then um, uh, a global pandemic began. And uh, I wasn't doing anything in anything. Uh, and so um, I have actually, um, uh, it, during the pandemic, um, been working with uh, Marie Villeneuve on, um, uh, on her show Far West uh, on uh, Radio Canada uh, every uh, three weeks. We we're, uh, we're doing hiatus in the summer, but I've been doing a, a, a little column uh, for her show every every three weeks, and that's the first consistent comedy writing that I've been doing um, uh, in uh, in French, where I actually sit down to write it in French, and the jokes exist in French first, um, and and it's been amazing. I, I like so that that's been that's been great. Josephine is in the francophone school system, which has brought French back into my life. Uh, on a daily basis in a way that it hasn't been in, in a long time. And so um, I feel um, up to the challenge of working in French in a way that I, I haven't necessarily before. And um, it's different. Like the, 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 the comedy, uh, the, the comedy is, works differently in the two different languages. Um, uh, I asked uh, Derek Seguin once like, you know, so what, what's the big difference is he said, in, in, in French, they laugh at my setups uh, instead of the punchlines. Like it's, uh, it, you know, it, it can be, it's not a one-to-one -one translation, um, but yeah, it's been, it's been fun. Uh, the first time I ever did comedy in French was in Calgary, which was to me uh, a joke in and of itself. Just that my, the first time I did French comedy was uh, in Calgary. And for most of the show, it was just people leaving because they just didn't realize it was a French show. And why would they? We were in Calgary. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, really? yeah, it was in Calgary. You never told me. Uh -oh, I didn't, that's true. Um, okay, this, we're gonna take one last question and it's from me, Charlie. Okay. So uh, as a creative person, um, I often have trouble balancing um, what I'm working on and you are both a comedian and a novelist. And uh, actually, we'll take one more question after this, but um, how do you balance uh, what you're working on and decide like on a given day, like today's noveling day versus today is comedy day, or this is noveling hour versus comedy hour? Um, yeah, um, so I, I don't know, like it's, 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 I, would say it's partly um, the comedy happens on other people's schedules. Uh, and so um, that helps because the writing tends to be on my own schedule. Like if you're doing stand up, it's because someone's got a show happening. And so you go do the show. Um, and, and so that helps break it up. Whereas the, the, the prose writing tends to be more self self directed, um, but they're both um, like I tend to think of of prose as like crystallized speech, like you're writing you're speaking on the page, um, and so I don't I think of them as fairly connected, like like um, or or 
as coming out of the same tube, I guess. Like, um, so it's, um, it's often just about like, what's the contract? Do I have something due? Do, do I have something that I have to work on? Um, is there a show? Um, uh, and then, and then like, which way am I feeling inspired or what am I, what am I uh, drawn to? Ideas for jokes will come out of the blue more than ideas for um, fiction. Although ideas for essays will come out of the blue in, in the way that jokes do. Um, so yeah, I, is that, does that speak to that? Totally, yeah, absolutely. Um, one last question. So uh, from Shiraz, um, if you want to uh, unmute yourself, you can ask your question and then that'll be our last one for today. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, yeah, yeah, hi. Thank you. Thank you for bringing Charles, uh, Charlie Chaplin again. My question is, what's the difference between female comedians and male comedians and why are they so marginalized in the media? And yeah, thank you. That's my short question. Is that correct? Um, I, I don't know that I could speak to a difference between female comedians and male comedians in terms of the, the comedy that they make. Um, uh, and I think historically there's definitely been, and, and, and actually the show Hacks that I mentioned at the beginning um, definitely covers this question quite a bit in terms of um, kind of covering what, what what costs um, success in comedy uh, came with for um, uh, for a female comedian in a certain time um, in this industry, uh, and and what of that holds over, and what what of it doesn't? Um, it'd be hard for me to speak to the experience of um, of, of a female comic. Um, I mean, it, in in any uh, age uh, from a first person perspective, but I, I think that um, I think that uh, female voices in the industry are are less and less um, marginalized. Uh, th there are um, there are a, a greater number of um, big name female comedians just at, at every level of the industry, including kind of on the industry side, like for instance, the, um, the, the person who's in charge of, of all English language uh, radio comedy at CBC, um, uh, Tracy Rideout, um, uh, and, and um, uh, uh, the CEO of, um, of uh, Atomic Cartoons, who, who, who I've always um, um, worked with in terms of like voice work, uh, uh, Jen uh, um, Twiner McCarran, like, so y y there, are, there are more um, people kind of both in front of the camera and behind the camera, so to speak. Um, so I, I, don't, I, I don't know that I could speak to um, what that experience is, is like now, but I, I, I would hope that it's one that feels less marginalized and I would say that in terms of the c comedy that people produce um, I don't think you could say um, that there's that there's any one particular thing that marks it out differently along a gender binary which is uh, probably a, a good and healthy thing. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charlie, for your time today and answering all our questions. And hey, Josephine, um, we really loved having you here as a guest. Do you think you could put your bracelet close to the screen so we could see what you made? Everybody's all curious. Amazing. So beautiful. Thanks for being here with us today.